Hey, I'm Wes with Nori, and today we're going to be talking about a problem that we see in a lot of places, and that is lubricant application, specifically in food and beverage companies. Now, we are going to give a special thanks to our friends at JetLube and OilSafe for bringing you this video. Whenever we talk about a food and beverage manufacturing facility, there are different regulations, there are different rules that, that we need to follow to make sure that the product is safe. And whenever we talk about contamination of a food product, there are many types of contaminants, but let's hone in on using the correct lubricant in the correct place. And with food grade lubricants, we have to make sure you know that they're safe. We gotta make sure that they're odorless, colorless. We gotta make sure that if they were to get, you know, incidental contact, that it's not going to hurt anyone or make anything sick. But then whenever we select the, the lubricant, we have to make sure that the technician can apply the lubricants in the correct areas as well. Not only is cross-contamination bad in terms of degradation within the oil or the grease itself, but it could also impact the machine. And whenever we talk about food and beverage, pharmaceuticals, wherever that may be, it can now also impact the product. So now we have wasteful product or, you know, it's, it's a risk that we try to avoid. So some of the ways that we can do this, right? One of the, the best places to start is of course, in your storage and handling area and making sure that we have a very good and concise labeling system. We want to make sure that people know if we're going to be using a food grade product that they can grab the food uh, grade product and apply it without putting it on top of anything else or having that risk of cross contamination. Some people will even segregate their food grade lubricants versus their non-food grade lubricants, which is a great way to do it, to try to minimize that as well. But there are products out there that make this a little bit easier to do. I mean, top up containers that are sealable and reusable, they can be color coded, labeled for food grade applications, non-food grade applications. Grease guns, especially clear bodied grease guns are great. So you can actually see what grease tube is inside of it. Same thing, they can be color coded, color coded quick connects, but you wanna do more than just colors, right? Because you know, there is a percentage of the workforce that is colorblind. So using a color as well as a shape usually helps make sure that we more target, you know, what lubricant is used where. Now we do have to make sure as we look at the balance of the plant equipment that we know where the food grade lubricants need to be used. We typically want to use, you know, food grade lubricants anywhere that's, you know, on or over a food processing line. Uh, one of the places that I always talk about is if we imagine a bakery and we have a conveyor belt with these biscuits going by, if we have a fan above this conveyor belt, and we have grease bearings in there, well, there's a chance, you know, through gravity that that grease could fall down. Definitely a food grade lubricant. If we're talking about the gearbox below the conveyor belt, you know, below where the food processing line is, maybe we don't have to use an H1 lubricant. Maybe we use an H2 at that case. H2 meaning, you know, there's none of the harmful additives or anything that could cause problems. Now, food grade lubrication is a very exact science. We have to make sure that we are using the correct lubricant in the correct place and applying it the right way every time. Some of those products are definitely available to help you. So to learn more about them, you can always visit the link below for JetLube and OilSafe. For more great educational content, visit Noria's YouTube video.